um, they are, uh, he's going to to bed soon, so he might come and say good night. <laughs> but um, 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 I think today is my honor to to this group, um, the TSIG. Um, I'm also new to the the system dynamic. Um, I mainly focus my research on um like quantitative uh data data science so it's uh doctor thank you dr peter pan for um introducing me to um the social science and, and this uh group model building uh, methodology and it's really useful uh to uh, try to understand a new topic and today we are using this um group model building to uh, try to understand uh, um the context of the share micro mobility services in in Bangkok, and um, so in my talk, um, there will be like thirty minutes of the talk, and then maybe another 30, 30 minutes for the discussion. So let me start um, the my presentation now. Um, so this this uh this project is funded by A Trans, the Asian. Transportation Research Society. Um, I have to mention this because uh, one of the co-founder of the uh, the institute is already in um, in here. So thank you for for your funding. Um, and the research team uh, we, we have Dr. Peter Pan from Radha University and myself from the Sesar University, and we also have two um, research assistants. And um, last year, uh, Bangkok uh, was named like the second most cycling friendly city um, in Asia. So this is kind of um, surprising to me because um, I don't see many of the cyclists in, in Bangkok and other kind of chair uh, micro mobility as well, like e-scooter or um, um, like mono wheels. Um, but uh, from from reading the, the 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 article, they mostly um focus on like in the park. So uh, we have uh, some kind of bike lane facility in the parks, and so for for um, leisure, for uh, sporting, and and um, for tourist tourism, but not um for commuting. Okay, because um. I am a big fan of um, kick scooter, not the e-scooter, because um, the e-scooter is kind of too heavy for me to to carry around, especially take it onto the um, the subway or or the sky train. So um, I I prefer to use the kick scooter, and um, this is uh, last year. I mean, two years ago uh, when I try to do some grocery shopping and at night and I didn't see this holes and this is the the what do you call it, the typical condition of the the sidewalk in, in Bangkok. So it's very hard for for me to to um to ride the, the um e-scooter the scooter safely and as a result I got some um ankle sprain and, and cannot I could not um, walk for two weeks. So um, so this is kind of my motivation to to study. Um, like there are a lot of services. Um, SMM, uh, the chair micro mobility services in in Bangkok. Like uh, the first one uh, in Thailand uh, launched like ten years ago. It's called Pan Pan, or literally translation is chair the right. And right now it still exists and. Um, the, so the model is that the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration or BMA uh, give a concession now to uh, to a company called Q Advertising. Um, you heard it right. So it's the the advertising company who got the concession from the BMA to to do the advertising at the the um, bike sharing station, and they are um, required to. To also put the bike sharing system at the at the station that they um do some advertising. So um this become um a little bit um the wrong purpose of of the 
the original purpose is to provide the, the bike sharing system, but uh, the bike sharing station are uh, designated by um, the, 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 what do you call like if you have most eyeballs to, to look at the, the advertisement, then um, it deserves to, to get the um, bike sharing stations. So it's still there until now, 10 years, but uh, so it's financially feasible, but uh, not many people use, use it because of the, the station locations are not, uh, that doesn't meet the demand. And then we have um, Ofo Mobike and Neurons. Uh, they came um, and operated in Thailand for uh, a couple of years. And then uh, before COVID, they, they withdrew from, from Thailand. So um, there are a lot of problems like um, for Ofo and Mobike uh, because it's, it's non-station based. So the, the bikes are returned at, at the, on the sidewalk and then they got complain from uh, the pedestrians. And for new run, um, from what I talked to the manager, um, he said, uh, because uh, the Thai law did not recognize the, um, this new kind of vehicle. So it's not legal to, to ride it on the sidewalk or even on the, on the road. So um, because of the, the unclear legal, they withdrew from, from Thailand as well. Um, but after COVID in 2021, then uh, there are three um, uh, service providers that um, arrived in, in Bangkok and they start operated in, in like campuses um, like in Chulalongkorn and, and Thammasat and also some kind of uh, tourism area like uh, Chinatown. They, they have some operations there. So um, Dr. Peter Pan and I uh, wonder um, what would be the, the success factors and the barriers that will prevent um, SMM to, to flourish in, in, in Thailand, especially in Bangkok. Um, so here comes the, the research objective is to, we are going to determine the factors that influence the success and failure of the SMM services and how each of the factor interact um, each other. And then uh, if we understand the interaction among these factors, then we can determine uh, proper policies and measure to, to support the SMM in, in Bangkok. And for our research framework, we have uh, uh, three steps to, uh, to create the, the um, causal loop diagram. So the first one is we did uh, literature review and also conducted uh, stakeholder interviews um, and asking them uh, like semi-structure interviews, asking them uh, like what are the factor, success factors uh, that can uh, make the SMM um, success and then what are the failure factors and what kind of measure that can be used to support SMM and how to remove the barrier. So once we ask uh, 23 stakeholders, then uh, we kind of combined with the, the factors that we extracted from the literature review and then um, we post it on the, on the wall so that uh, the participants can, um, can see and vote uh, during the workshop one. So we have two, uh, two workshops. The first, ones are to, the first one is to determine the um, like um, influential factors and then also uh, to, to draw the relationships among these factors. And uh, at the end of the workshops, we get the, the, the first workshop, we get the causal loop diagrams. And then uh, for the second one, we're focusing on comparing the chairman community with the, uh, the incumbent service, uh, which is the motorcycle taxi. They are very, very popular in, in Bangkok. They are like everywhere. So we would like to learn their, their secret sauce. What is the secret sauce of the motorcycle taxi? So in, we invited the motorcycle taxi association, uh, the, the, the president to come to, to talk at the workshop. And also uh, we um, asked the participant to, to vote for um, which links the relationship between the factors, which one uh, uh, 
have strong relationship, which one have weak relationship. And then at the end, we discuss the, the policies and measures um, at the end of the workshop too. Okay. And the uh, 23 stakeholders, uh, they are uh, Pan the, the concessionaire of the BMA. Right? Um, this is uh, the, the one of the campus that operate uh, uh, bike sharing, um, and we will hop car, be mobility. And for the user, we, we ask um, the Thailand Walking and Cycling Institute. So they promote the, the active transportation, especially the walking and cycling, and also um, the, the, the real users from uh, any wheel, hop car and be mobility to, to, to give the interview and academics, consultant, insurance company, uh, regulator, like the Department of Land Transport who um, regulate the, the vehicle specifications and the traffic police who um, enforce the, the traffic laws on the, on the road and also the insurance commission. Uh, the local authority is uh, the, the key player is the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration who already um, um, give the concessionaire to, to Pan Pan. Okay. A planning agency, a mass transit operator, and lastly, a motorcycle taxi association. And the interview were conducting both like online on site, depending on the, the preference of the um the interviewees. And so based on the 23 interview patients, we uh came up with some like success factors. Uh, uh and we have uh, this kind of uh framework to to categorize the factors in terms of context, product, and market. Uh, the example are like support from the government, integration between SMM and public transportation. Um, they must have a good public relation, uh, why uh, or big service coverage, uh, listen to the customer feedback. Uh, there should be a high usage from the tourists, from the general user or the regular user. And these are the fac success factors that uh, are from the, the um, interviews. And they are also various factors. Uh, you can see a lot more, a lot more of the failures than the facts, the success factors. So unclear or no regulation. Uh, this this is definitely from the service provider and time and then cost, uh, poor public transportation network now. Um, lack of studies on business models and financial analysis. Um, uh, the unsuitable station location. So th these are the, the value factors that identify from uh, the interview and also from the, the literature review. And how to make, so this, this is a question like we asked the interviewees, like how to make the, um, uh, the, the SMM success in, in Bangkok and Thailand. So uh, we should have a clear safety standard for SMM uh, uh, the government should subsidize the cost or the operating costs or give some incentive, tax incentive or import tax um, exemption. Um, there should be uh, the rules specifically designed for SMM. Uh, there should be some kind of government private sector collaboration. Yeah, this is some example. Um, and we ask uh, the participants like how to remove the obstacles of SMM. So this is kind of um, similar to, to the previous slide, which is to uh, like provide a dedicated lens. So um, a lot of use, a lot of interview uh, interviewees, they um, mention about the dedicated lens because they are um, concerned about the safety of, of the riders who um, sometimes right on the on the highway on on the roadway okay with the with the um motorized vehicle motor vehicles um some of the product uh category uh, like provide flexible insurance so right now there are no insurance policy um or insurance product from from the insur insurer because uh it's not popular yet and it's not forced by the uh, OIC or Office of 
uh, insurance commission yet. Oh, so OAC said they, they, they can enforce only when there are some um, requests from the, the consumers. So it's like chicken and egg um, because the user won't, that doesn't want to use it because uh, there's no insurance, something like that. And so based on the, the factors that we listed, we show these to the participants, to the stakeholders, and we ask them to, to create a causal loop diagram. Um, and then this, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, because um, during 2022, there was still some COVID uh, pandemic um, and some of the participants uh, are more willing to, 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 to join the workshop by online. So we set the, the workshop into on-site team and online team. And um, we, we have uh, two separate sets of uh, the causal loop diagram. And then after the, the workshop, then we we combine and we combine them together by 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 us by the research team. Okay, uh, so once we have the final CLD, uh, we uh, we set we make an appointment for the next workshop, the second workshop, and then we show them the causal loop diagram. And then so the, he is the president of the motorcycle taxi association in Thailand. So he represents the motorcycle taxi rider. Um, so we compare the Thai micro mobility with the motorcycle taxi service. Uh, what are uh, the disadvantage of the SMM in, in Thailand compared with the motorcycle taxi? Okay. So um, based on the context, so in, in Thailand, there are um, insurance for motorcycle taxi. Okay. And also there are some regulations um, uh, from, from the government already to, to, to regulate uh, how many um, riders uh, in each area. Okay. So they, are, they, they have a week, you know, monthly meeting between the BMA and Department of Land Transport and motorcycle taxi providers. Um, they have a meeting if um, this month there are more demand than the, the, the riders, then they can add the riders and they have to check the, the record of the riders. So they have a, a, some kind of meeting every month to discuss the, the issue. And um, the poor road network is also a plus for uh, motorcycle taxi because uh, once you get off from the sky train or subway, then um, you have to walk to your house, maybe another five kilometers and there are no other um, alternative transportation more. So you have to use a motorcycle taxi or um, um, like just the, the taxi. Okay. For the um, product perspective, um, people say uh, motorcycle taxi is, is fast and it's everywhere and you, you can call it. Um, so it's, it's everywhere. I mean, if you um, get off from the subway station, then uh, you will most likely to find uh, uh, the, the guys wearing the orange vest um, uh, waiting for you um, like 11 p.m. midnight, you, still, you can still see them. Um, very highly responsive supply. I have my students who um, just bought a uh, apartment, no, a condominium. And then um, like the first week that the condominium opened, then there will be a motorcycle taxi in front of, <laughs> in front of the, the um, the condominium, okay. And no need for um, to download the app, no need to register um, the user. And the driver is like highly skilled. And because of in, in Thailand, in, in Bangkok, uh, traffic jam, then a motorcycle taxi can like sneak for a really small gap, uh, small space. And uh, I, I mean, this one, if you compare with the e-scooter, you need some kind of uh, uh, driving skill. Uh, like my wife, she used um, e-scooter two times and she fell down um, both times. She fell down because uh, he let go of her one hand. So <laughs> he had a bad experience with the e-scooter. Okay. Um, so... Um, 
Besides the, the discussion on the tech, motorcycle taxi comparison with the SMM, we also ask the participant to to vote for the relationship. Okay, so um, between each factors, we ask the participant to to vote if uh, each link has a strong, medium, or weak uh, relationship. Okay, and and these are the score from from all 23 uh, stakeholders and based on this um, um, score then we 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 uh, simplified it to to be uh, thick line is a strong um, strength the um, the solid line the thin line is the medium length and then the weak the weak link is the bias line and and you can see that the, there are um, one two three four five six um six categories of the factors the first one uh, the box a is uh, support from the government and for example like uh, the government should provide a sandbox program uh, should have co collaboration uh, among governments and private sectors should develop the infrastructure for smm uh, the government should also do the pr and to subsidize the cost of operation um, box B is about the uh, the factors related to infrastructure. So the infrastructure should be ready. There should be a dedicated lane. Uh, the public transport, like the subway or SkyTrain, should should have a really large coverage so that we the people doesn't have to use um personal car and connectivity with other public tran transport services. This is talking about the accessibility to, to other services. Uh, box C is about uh, operations, uh, the quality of the operation and services. So this, this one has to do with the, um, the service provider. Um, the, the fee should be low, the service coverage should be large. Uh, there should be plenty of, the way, uh, plenty of vehicles. The service should be attractive and there should be a suitable station location. Um, D is about the user, uh, the awareness of the user, and E is about law and regulations. So based, based on this uh, causal, final causal loop back that we got, you can see that um, all, uh, many of the thick lines are from, are due from the, starting from the, the government. So it's like the government is the, um, the first step of, of the system and then and then um, like quality of the service seems to be like the, the effects of other um, other factors. So I, I, I look at the literature really when this is kind of um, somewhat different from other other countries in, in that uh, this is we just have the um, chair micro mobility maybe just for um, a few years so, uh, people who join in the um, in the workshop you know, think of SMM as uh, still the first step, first stage. So people still think that uh, the government should should subsidize, should support, um, should change the law and regulations, and uh, we don't complain much about um, um, other factors during the usage like the. the um, like the weather in Thailand or slope or um, um, the, the, the emission, something like that. Okay. And so these are the findings. Uh, I already mentioned there are five categories, uh, five boxes I mentioned. And this is uh, also uh, uh, the, the support from the government seem to be like on the cost side and the quality of the operation is on the, the ethics side. Um, the strong links are from the support, support from the government, and, and there's a need for the research and evaluation to help uh, guide the infrastructure development. Because in Thailand, it's hard to find the data about um, the travel demand, uh, so the service provider, they don't know where to put the, the SMM stations. And so there should be uh, more uh, research funding on this. and then. Um, uh, in in the in the meeting, we concluded that we there should be a dedicated infrastructure like bike lane because um to to separate the 
motor vehicles and SMM, but um, then the BMA or the Bangkok Metropolitan and also Pan Pan and other service provider, they think that uh, that's a share lane is enough because if if they have to wait for uh, the dedicated dedicated lane, uh, separate lane, it would take like forever for for um for Bangkok to to have SMM service with the share lane. And um we 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 saw some interaction among um participants like um the walk and bike institute they they have some kind of report research report related to uh, the demand or the behavior of the the, the bikers then uh, pan pan and other service provider asking for the walk and bike uh, institute to to share uh, so this is kind of a good really good dynamic to to discuss and collaborate um That's so, just five more minutes thank you mm -hmm. okay and there's some based on um, my observation, our observation, we, we saw there's some gap between the, the expectation of, of the stakeholder and the um, capability of the government. Like BMA said, they don't have, uh, don't have budget, they don't have money. Sometimes even they don't have the authority to, to let um, like the um, SMM to, to ride on the um on the on the road that's that's belong to the traffic police something like that um and at the end of the research we uh we group the the factors that are um actionable by the government and actionable by the service provider and then in the middle we have some kind of uh, co-creation it has to be collaboration among uh, between the government and SMM provider to uh, kind of develop sandbox to learn and understand what is SMM to Thai people. And then there should be a, a follow-up research and evaluation to give feedback to, to the provider and the government. So this is a summary that we should have a uh, sandbox and then focus on the um, special corridor or closed area that close to the mass transit station and there should be a dedicated lane or share lane with signage and SMM should be uh, evaluated by, uh, by, by the third party. Okay, so I think this um, concludes my presentation and I'll be, I mean, un unless uh, Dr. Pripan, you want to add anything on my presentation? No, I think it's, uh, yeah, this was done perfectly. And um, I, I would be yeah in, interesting to maybe discuss together with others and with you too, you know, about the, the research and also what how how can we further improve this approach? Because it's uh, uh, I think one of the first or one of the few study that use you know, GMB to evaluate you know, transport service. In this case, it's also a quite a new type of service that you know, not many people are familiar with in Bangkok. So. So thank you, uh, Dr. Sarot, for your wonderful presentation. And um, yeah, now thank I'm you. open to, let's start with uh, open to the floor. If you have any question or remark, please feel free to uh, turn on your microphone or yeah, your screen or even type in to the chat box. I think maybe to kick start, um, oh, sorry, yes, Hampers. Would you like to ask? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, first of all, for an interesting presentation here. It's very interesting to hear this study of yours and how you have done it and so on for someone who is enrolled in trying to, to understand the futures of mobility and accessibility services as well, though. But uh, uh, interesting to hear. Uh, uh, one of the questions, I had a, a few questions actually, but, but I think maybe it's best to just take one because maybe there's more people that want to ask questions. But the first one was really that I've seen, think maybe a pattern in, in the work that you, the two of you have been doing together recently where you start out with interviews when you do these uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, system dynamics uh, approaches to, to transport system and so on. I saw this uh, paper you wrote with uh, car aligning uh, mental models uh, among stakeholders for car sharing as well, where you also started out with uh, interviews. And I wondered um, what, why you are doing that and, and what, how that affects your starting points when you 
and then come to that workshopping uh, stage. Yes, thank you, Hampus. Maybe I can take this one because it's about methodology, right? So um, just we used the semi structure interview to kind of like uh, give a first insight into the stakeholder mind. I think partly is preparing them for the workshop you know, to introduce also uh, about our project in more detail because we of course send them you know the uh, the detail of the project and you know what have you uh, but i think for to do the semi structure interview it helped us to uh, make the first contact with them to also ask a few questions that we can already use for initial analysis right to to prepare also for the workshop and in addition, you know, because I'm I'm based in the Netherlands and Dr. Sarod is based in Bangkok, most uh, uh, stakeholder also in Bangkok. So the yeah the the workshop is kind of um, semi hybrid online offline. So in order to making sure that we capture the mind mapping, or you can say that you know the. the um, or the, the element that they would like to express with us uh, effectively. We also use um, semi-structured interview to, to help to capture this. This is also kind of helpful because in, in the focus group setting, you know, um, some people are hesitate to share um, you know, certain view. So I think we are able to, to capture, you know, some element that is perhaps more detailed than just doing a focus group. We don't know this exactly because we don't, we didn't run the same kind of a method, you know, side by side with the same uh, stakeholder to compare this output. But yeah, thank you for asking that. I hope that's clear to you. Yeah, thank can, can you. Can I add, sorry, can, can I add like one more thing? I'm, I'm not an expert in, you know, uh, DMB, but um, from what I, I noticed is that when uh, we discuss in groups, maybe in just Thai people, but uh, there'll be someone who dominates the conversation. So um, some people who, who have some opinion, he or she might not um, say it in, in the group, but when we ask him um, privately, uh, like individually, then we, we get more uh, feedback from, from these people. Yeah. It seems, it seems like valid points, all of them. Well, one thing that I also thought about myself that I thought might have been a reason that that could be something as well, maybe, is, is that it's a, a bit of an, a, a norming process, converging process during a workshop when you have people talking and, and, and you, we get our, our ideas colored by one another's ideas. But if you talk to people on their own, to begin with, you might get a diversity in another way as well. So maybe that could be a benefit as well. Um, mm, that's yeah. a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Varelia. You'd like to, yeah. I saw uh, Vareli hands up. So please feel free to turn on the microphone and yes. Dr. Sarod, can you unshare the screen perhaps then we can, yeah, thank you. Uh, Varelia, hand down again. I don't know if you have a, a, a question or there was a, but feel free to, to come back to, to, to that later perhaps. Um, any others? Yeah, sorry, problem with the connection. Okay, thank you, yes. Um, Anyone else would like to? Yeah. What lesson did you see? This is from Henna. What lesson do you see from developing a new model for system where the scope of interest to stakeholder is not entirely clear? Was your scope completely clear with you when you start the workshops? Perhaps Dr. Sarod can, can uh, take this one first and I can add to that. What was our, was our scope clear in the beginning? In uh, when we're starting the workshop, um, I don't think I don't think so. Yeah, not not <laughs> not really clear. Um, let me let me read the, the question again. Do you see what the hell? Um, I mean, one one thing I see is that uh, 
like the stakeholders they maybe because in thailand uh, this the share micro mobility service is still new so in each of the participants they have different image of share micro mobility in, in their head yeah like some people always think about uh, e-scooter some people um, bicycle as well some people mix between the two um yeah so it's i i think even for for me um the, the image is not the same as other um participants um yep. Dr. Pan, you wanna... yeah i think the, the in terms of the scope i think we kind of um well we had an idea that we want to you know focus on the chair micro mobility and the success and failure factors i think but like as dr sarod said and the more we delve into that uh the talk to different stakeholders the more we realize that there's diverse in understanding about the concept mm -hmm. of chair micro mobility you know some people also didn't think that um chair bike was actually micro mobility as well so this term the so-called concept uh yeah that's quite different so in a way you know by but for us as a researcher to to look into this subject and make an interview to this is also affect the stakeholder in a way you know is it, it is two-way kind of um, communication i would say thank you for the question it's very interesting I think one point that uh, may be quite interesting uh, to me is that you know the, the government is in this um, the as of the Sarot chair the outcome um, the government is seen as a kind of key stakeholder or, or if you like the power stakeholder that have to make that first step the provider in a way was waiting you can say waiting or um, yeah relying uh, for the government to take that first step, whatever that may be, um, to, to provide infrastructure, subsidize, and service, and so on. So to me, this is kind of um, showing that is in a kind of stalemate uh, situation, because the government also kind of waiting to see the demand to go up first, right, to make that first step. Mm -hmm. And in a way, yeah, we could see this is also an, a finding that we made through this that is um everyone's waiting for everyone else and someone no one would i mean the the service provider could also uh, have a relook at this and yeah see it as an opportunity that they can actually um yeah empower be more, be more empowered in in leading the service but this is of course yeah um, more of uh, the observation from the result that i made in this Hampers, uh, sorry, maybe we go back to, um, I think she, she's, uh, she's we, we have the question from ah, Larry. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, how, Mr. Would you, how would you describe your experiences with CRD drawing with the stakeholders? Was it difficult to receive feedback loops during the GMB session? um so for, for this question um about the experience about the CRD drawing i think there are two experiences one with the online group and one is the offline group i think for the online group maybe dr peter pan can um, talk about it because i'm in the offline group and yeah it's, it's kind of difficult as i said when we um gather into a group then uh there's someone who dominates the conversation <laughs> so we try to um give a, a round of each person to to give opinion so it's kind of hard yeah for the off on site yeah the online also did the same and but i think online even more difficult because you know sometimes people switch off their uh um yeah their camera so it's difficult to engage uh with the um yeah the participant of the workshop and so that was even more difficult 
I think. The, but as you can probably see from the outcome also, that we didn't manage to draw any feedback loop. Actually, it's more of just the kind of the uh, the uh, yeah causal link, you can say. But the feedback loop, as we know from using CLD, or you know, that was quite more difficult to 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 draw. Yeah. Thank you, Warali. And then the next question uh, from Mar Mariana about the framework that we use to uh, select stakeholder, right? I think we use the kind of like important um, and relevant framework to, to select the stakeholder involved. And also we use a, a kind of, yeah, the, the actors and then stakeholder um, kind of level of influence to, to select the stakeholder. So, in this case, we didn't use the uh, Michel typology of power, legitimacy, and urgency. But that's a very interesting framework that, you know, um, it's the first time that I see this. So, yeah, we we'll look into that. So, Mar Mariana, anything else you would like to add to that? Or did I answer you clearly? Yeah, thank you so much. I, I was curious just because I am, uh, yeah, trying to structure uh, this part of, uh, of my research. And I was wondering how you, you chose your stakeholders, but that's that's a good answer. Thank you so much. It was a very interesting presentation. Thank you too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on to the next question from Nuna Pass, I think. Uh, so for the government, would you separate between different organization? I mean, infrastructure policy, yeah? That's totally, uh, um, that was also a bit messy. Does it affect SMM in Thailand? That's also, you know, as um, Dr. Sarot mentioned, there are also different, level of uh, public author uh, public authority or public organization like right? local which is the bmm the bangkok um uh, metropolitan metropolitan yeah thank you <laughs> and also the the central government or the policy maker also they have different like bodies that you know in thailand um transport planning and transport governance is pretty fragmented yeah i think um, you know different it's not really an integrated um, approach, so to say. And it does indeed affect SMM in Thailand. I think maybe Dr. Sarot can say a bit more about this than me. I think how does the fragmentation of the government affect the SMM implementation? Mm. Yeah, I think it's so fragmented that the so all the service providers uh, complain that they they don't know who to to talk to. Like they want to um to run an operation, they go to see the BMA, the Bangkok Metropolitan, and Bangkok said, "It's not it's not my job. Just go to see uh Department of Land Transport." Department of Land Transport said, oh, "It's not in the law, so it's out of my hand." <laughs> and then and like this this story go goes round. So yeah, it's. Um, so the problem we see now is that there is no uh, uh, specific government body to to take care of not just the SMM but the all new kind of transportation uh, services um, like car sharing, ride hailing, um, chemical mobility, mm. mass. Yeah, there's no like each each of the organization is taking care of of their silo so when it comes to a uh, new kind of mobility it's, it's really hard for uh, the service provider to to start talking to someone yeah. so this gmb is, is a really really good start for for um, all the stakeholders in, in related to the smm in, in thailand yeah yeah, we can say it's a kind of, um, well, side, you can say side effect or, yeah, um, that side benefit that, you know, this GMB bring people, different stakeholders together to mm -hmm. share their opinion or, you know, different kind of opinion and you can say mental model about this service. Yeah. And I think there's an interest perhaps to kind of form a consortium, right? That you, you um, mentioned already. Mm -hmm. 
like like right now the um e-scooter sharing and bike sharing uh is is running a pilot test in uh Jula Longkorn University and mm -hmm. then now the BMA knows that or realize that uh, oh there's uh the real operation here so BMA want to to see the information like how many accidents they have how many people they use what are the the problems they have so they can uh, once they are uh, grow the customer base big enough uh, outside campus and coming to uh, the Bangkok metropolitan areas then BMA can handle it better I think if if they can talk to the the Jula Longkorn University uh -huh. about a lesson learned yeah. So mm -hmm. we have some hope, I think. <laughs> we have some, yes, I hope so too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Thank you. So I think also uh, a question to other that is here, you know, do you see such an approach um, useful in your research? Or, you know, do you see um, GMB being used to help you addressing your research i think some of us already looking into that like hampers i think he's also working on gmb uh in his and applying to his case i think do you want me to try and answer or <laughs> <laughs> yeah please try yeah. Uh, more, it's more like that. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I should say that it's it's not the, it's not like I have a very long standing experience of you using it, but I have tried to use it in in research, uh, trying to do this kind of qualitative modeling together with stakeholders in, in the context of mobility and accessibility services. Um, and and to be honest, I, I have been a bit back and forth uh, with it. Uh, sometimes I think that it, it is quite difficult to get these feedback loops and, and things out in the way that I would have wanted. So, so, uh, but at other times I feel like, um, but this is complex things and, and it's not very easy to deal with complex systems. So, so to find a way to deal with complex systems is actually worth a lot, even though it's not super easy. Um, so that, that's the sort of general answer to that question. <laughs> what is the context opinion. of your, your research? Uh, the context is uh, we so we the first of all we're in Sweden so that that changes a bit of of the uh, context but but uh, uh, but then it's uh, within these research programs that tries tries to look at mobility and accessibility services and we try to make a, 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 a what is called a living lab where, where we try to use try to explore what how how it works in reality when we position certain mobility services and accessibility services in a in a context and see what happens and we interview people and and so on and then we also try to look at it from from many different perspectives like public sector and private sector and the market perspective and, and then the citizens how do they react to these these things and and what i do in, in my position is is trying to to discuss with these other work packages and work with these individual elements and try to bring these ideas towards what could the future mean for mobility and accessibility services based on this, what we learn from, from a living lab and from these other work packages that works with these aspects. So, so in, in the case, in, in relation to uh, trying to do, do um, group model building specifically, we'll try to gather actors from, from all of these different um, contexts as well as academic researchers and try to, to, to explore what kind of um, uh, potential effect mobility and accessibility services could have in the future. So that, mm. That's the context. Thank you. Mm. Sure, ben, I'll answer your question about the um, applicability. I was particularly impressed by your the way you represented the links that were most and least important. I think that that's something that I would like to try in my work and. Um, along with the last speaker, I agree that it it's, can be hard to tease causal loop diagrams out of, for example, a bunch of post sets or ideas, even if they seem really well organized during the session. Um, it's very difficult to keep people there for the three or four hours that it might take to build the CLD. So you talk to them for an hour or an hour and a half, you thank them, you let them go, and then you come back the next day and you think, oh no, what do I do with all these post sets? So I think that what would be interesting would be to, for us would be to try putting together a simple CLD and then 
only giving people the option to vote something low importance, medium importance, or high importance as a next step. We've done the free post-it activity. We've done the, okay, here's a printout and you can write comments on the sheet, but we still don't quite have a sense of, do you think in general that this works? And if so, what are the important links? And that's something that we need to get out. So I was very pleased to see that, something I'll take away from your presentation. So thank you. Thank you, Anna. I think we, I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity to also thank uh, Montira, who is a research assistant in our project, who is also really uh, working hard behind the scenes and also actually in front of the scene as well to support actually this activity that we were doing um, during the workshop. Just continue on. Any other um, remark and comments? Um, I might take the opportunity yes. to latch on to Hannah's question and say mm -hmm. Hannah because it says so in the name here. I hope that's correct. Uh, uh, but um, uh, and that is about when, when you when you rate these links with regards to importance. How many think that this one is important and so on. Uh, one thing to came, that came to mind to me is also whether you kept track of who thinks this is important. Because I can imagine that the mobility service provider think that that support from the government, for example, is very important. Because then you sort of, um, I mean, th that is something that you are looking to get that that's very useful to you. So, in with regards to the, who the actors are, what are your thoughts on this prioritizing um, methodology? Yes, yeah, we thought of that, and uh, we couldn't do it because of the tools we have. I think with Miro, uh, it was not possible to to keep track of who what what. Yeah. And I think we all can only give uh, the best is to give everyone the same amount of vote, so that you know they can actually spend on spend on this uh, different link, you know. Um, but I think that would be an interesting indeed. You know, if we can track who vote what to classify the the weighting in that way. Yeah. Uh, it it is one thing that I will request the feature to my role. <laughs> next year next year project yes yes that's a good idea yes. yeah i think one thing that i also uh, actually come up when uh, here Rota Sarot present is that you know this kind of exercise is created in that particular context right in the uh, bangkok context of which smm failed so you <laughs> haven't success yet so in a way is a, a little bit of a bound rationality you know that that the, the user the stakeholder are actually in this environment when it hasn't been a success you know and they cannot imagine what would be a success of course they can imagine what uh, the factor that can help them to uh, address what failure is so it's a kind of opposite to failure but of course there's maybe more than that right there may be a positive factor that that doesn't contribute in the opposite doesn't contribute to Failure, if you understand what I mean, <laughs> that the stakeholder doesn't really, uh, cannot identify in in this. So yeah, I think that, that would be an interesting um, exercise to carry out in a context where SMM success or you know, widely used, for example, yeah, I mean in cities in USA or you know in European city like maybe Germany. I'm looking at. Uh, Caroline, <laughs> but yeah, but we um or other cities perhaps yeah that perhaps it can generate or, uh, it, this thing yeah even even in Bangkok mm. when we wait for another three or five years uh but we reach to uh, another stage of uh, SMM adoption yeah yeah I think as we coming to the end of the session maybe doctor, I give the last word to Doctor Sarod to wrap and then I will. Just wrap up this session. Dr. Sarod, do you have anything to add? To well, um, so I, I came in from like quantitative guy. If you um, look at my other papers, but um, so thank you, Dr. Peter Pan, for introducing this uh kind of wonderful tool. Um, it's it's not just a tool to extract um the the thought or perspective from from the participants, but also uh. The participants they, they learn from from these activities as well. So something that I um kind of previously overlooked that uh, the qualitative research is, is also very important. So thank you. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, we hope to com uh, bring uh, the, the complementation between quantitative and qualitative that uh, result in uh, us doing some interesting research. So just to kind of wrap this up, I would like to thank everyone for attending and also bring your attention to the final, the finale of uh, our lecture series this year, uh, lecture number four, which will be in a month time, will be by Claudia Andrato from the ITRL from the KTH, right? She will also, also share with us the barrier and potential of city hubs, you know, maybe similar to uh, this, but she will also um, have a different approach into that. In that she also looking at the quantitative uh, modeling part of this as well. The abstract will be sent to you uh, in your email. If you already register, I think you are because you're already here. So. Finally, I would like to thank you again for your wonderful attendance and uh, yeah, looking forward to see you in the next uh, meeting. And thank you, Dr. Sarod, for this presentation. Have a nice thank day you. onward, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone.